Captain, we are being hailed. This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Enterprise. But what could it be? Unknown, sir. Perhaps it is scanning. 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 in my head never gonna fuck you up never gonna never beat gonna... you down <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's nice you know <laughs> never gonna fuck never gonna fuck never gonna fuck you up because <laughs> you gotta throw in the remix in there you know <laughs> never gonna fa- fa- fuck you up <laughs> never gonna beat you down <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome everybody to the Away Team, our Star Trek The Next Generation dedicated podcast that recaps each episode with a bit of a twist. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. So we are, we are winding down. Not only are we winding down 2017, ladies and gentlemen, with episode 49, but coming j- January, we'll be rolling down ep- season two with the, with the, uh, with the 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 blasphemy of a fast flashback episode, Shades of Grey, the greatest episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because it's it, it's it's kind of a it's it's like a total opposite of this episode. Like this episode, kind of the episode we're doing is peak performance, and this is like the episode that kind of kind of shows Riker kind of what he's made of. And then we have the next episode, which uh, he catches a virus, so we have to go through flashbacks for him to cure it. <laughs> It's right. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> so, uh, so I actually yes. really like this episode too. Oh no, I I dug this episode. Actually, when I watched it again, I was like, oh yeah, this is actually a good episode. And again, it does have an A B storyline. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it flows a little better. So, uh, so as 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 we do, um, we. I think we need to find out what happens next time on Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> next time on Star Trek The Next Generation. The hunt begins, number one. The crew battles each other in simulated war games. Computers report heavy damage to the Enterprise. Bring us about, Ensign. Maximum shields. But a surprise ambush traps them in a fight for survival. That's no ghost attacking the Enterprise. That's real. Where are my weapons? Unavailable, sir. The connections have been fused. On Star Trek, the next generation. So, um, so yeah. So there is one thing that I want to, I gotta, I was going to try to find this before. Ah, yeah, there he is. Um, they have quite a few extras talking in this episode. Uh, we get the uh, we get kind of a featured character, Ensign Burke. And for those of you that uh, I don't know, maybe watch Star Trek <laughs> uh, or watch Star Trek Generations, he was the navigator on the Enterprise B. Uh, Twenty four fans, he was uh, Special Agent Aaron. I. Uh, also, I believe he was he played a, a Secret Service officer in the West Wing, uh, and he f- most recently, all you Transformer fans out there, he plays usually the military honcho, the big guy, and is supposed to die in like every movie, but he's always cast as another general, as if we're not supposed to recognize this guy. Right. Uh, so the actor Glenn Morshow, Morshower, and I saw him in there. And I was like, well, "Holy shit, he looks so young." But he had a pretty decent sized part in this episode. And then of course we had as Braktor Cork. Armin Shimmer. This is the this is the first episode where the Ferengis are done correct. Like not only not only um Shimmerman, mm-hmm. but even the dude next to him. My my right. favorite part of this episode is where they first get on screen and how confused the Ferengis look. Like they're just like the fuck are you guys doing out here? <laughs> <laughs> I I legit laughed my ass off. <laughs> I was gonna say, hey, um, if you go to Memory Alpha, they have the catalog number for the VHS release of this episode. Well, now I have to go there, don't I? 
Yeah. Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> <laughs> as, as as his dedication to the the foregone media, he needs to he needs to to, to do this. If it will go there, that's the real. There we go. <laughs> Never gonna. Why is it on well? some? Never it's on some of them and it's not on other ones. Like it's, it's I don't know. I, I guess I, I know that sometimes they didn't do, you know, uh, episodes for every episode or tapes for every episode. So who knows? Listen, the original UK VHS release, two episode tapes, CIC video, volume 24, catalog number VHR 2507, 7th of October, 1991. Okay. That's right. That's right. right. Oh, That's right. but then the UK re release, three <laughs> episode tapes, Paramount Home Entertainment, volume 2.7, catalog number VHR 4743, 5th of July, 19. <laughs> it, was also, it was also part of the TNG Season 2 DVD collection and the TNG Season 2 Blu ray collection. That's right. And now that you guys are firmly excited. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Go, what, was that a long dramatic pause or were you actually just. No, I'm j- I just said beautiful. I just, oh, you know, okay. throw a beautiful one. Uh-huh, okay. Know? I love how they have special appearance by Deanna Mulder as Dr. Fralaski because she gained <laughs> part of the fucking crew. <laughs> yeah, because she wasn't made an official. Yeah, every episode she was always special guest because she wasn't made part of the crew. Next episode will be her final. She actually wasn't too bad in this episode. No, she wasn't. No, she actually she's she was an instigator. Sure. She's an instigator though. She's, she's always a fucking yeah, you know, racist bitch. <laughs> oh, so uh, the Enterprise has basically been kind of coerced into participating in a battle simulation. Uh, you kind of hear it in 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 Picard's like. Uh, captain's log and i was like yeah because i got better things to do <laughs> like you right. know like why do you know i want to take a part of that because i got better shit to do that's that's what i gotta do um because we out here doing work man i got time yeah. for these fucking games yeah if, if i don't know if you notice this or not but out here this is not games it's not games out here <laughs> we got shit to do <laughs> we doing real shit right uh so um so they meet up with famed strategist Kolrami en route to the battle simulation in the uh, Brass Lotus system where Commander Riker will command the USS Hathaway, an 80-year-old ship, and go up against the Enterprise D because, you know, my, that's my fair. First, <laughs> my first note in here is this chick is so hot, and I don't even remember who I'm talking about. What chick? I guess there was a hot chick in the beginning, bro. It might have been on the bridge. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So, and it, it's kind of funny because, like, Korami gets onto the ship, and Picard and Korami go right up into the observation lounge. And so they start talking about um, Worf. Worf starts looking at uh, Korami and, like, thinking, you know, I see this guy, but I, 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 I don't see it. Like he has like doubts about his uh, abilities, and then of course Data checks him with, of course, knowledge, and telling him that you know that their race is has, was feared for nine millennia for the having the most innately strategic minds in the known galaxy. And it was funny because it kind of seemed like Worf was Worf was kind of looking at him like, hmm, challenge extended. You know, it was kind of like that kind of like <laughs> so. Picard and Riker are re- are first reluctant to take part in the stimulation as they believe diplomacy and exploration are the important mandates of Starfleet and that Starfleet isn't a military organization. But because of the recent Borg threat, they decided that it's a good idea to hone their tactical skills with as many options as possible in this crisis. And it's funny because, like, you know, Riker's like, I believe brain over brawn, you know, and I'm like man, you're the most type A personality on this ship. <laughs> Who the fuck are you talking about? 
<laughs> he's yes. fucking he's fucking Kurt reincarnated and shit. Exactly. It's like, oh come on, dude. <laughs> you save that for the ladies. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you could see right off the bat that Karami is not feeling it about Riker. Like he's like not in it at all. Yeah, he's not he's not um intoxicated. Right. As other people would be with his charm. Well, see, the thing the thing is is that Riker didn't lean in front of him and he didn't you know how he gets on when he sits on a chair that's lower than him. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> <laughs> oh, um by the way, by the way, this chick is so hot was actually from um episode 44 of Q Who cuz I was in the wrong note. So <laughs> <laughs> that was probably talking about Ensign, uh, what was it, Mendez? Ensign Mendez, I want to say. The chick that was on for two episodes and she spilt the hot cocoa on the captain. I didn't see her on this one. No, I'm saying, because I was on the, oh, I was oh, on the old the notes. Ones. Oh, okay. So just, uh, you know, a little shout out. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so Picard gives Riker the choice of officers, uh, except for Data, because Data's going to be uh, Picard's first officer. So he said that the, real quick too. He was yeah. like, "Oh, except for Data, Data's gonna yeah. be here with me." Uh, say, you can have anybody want to save Data because he's gonna be here with me because, you know, you know, I, he kind of, he kind of blackmailed me into it, saying that you know if I don't do this, he's gonna talk about. Well, I don't want to get into the details, but you, that would have been funny going. if Picard's like Data is gonna stay here and be my first officer because he's in the B storyline and is required to be on the Enterprise. <laughs> Right, his, his storyline function uh, functions better if he's on board the ship as opposed to right. you know being over there. It would just seem a little more awkward. And uh, but you can take Wesley in his place. Aww. <laughs> and uh, so and it was funny because like uh, Kal Rami was like, you know, you should you should pick his team, and then he's like, the leader of the away team has full control of who he wants. And I was yeah, like, but then he kind of cops out at the end because he's like. Like basically said, if problems should go back to the leader, basically saying, if I give him full control, it ain't my fucking fault. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going like, to be Riker's fault. <laughs> See, I have full control. I, the uh, leader of the away team has full control. Also, if shit goes bad, I can say, well, you picked them. So, you know. Right. It, 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 it you, saves bro. me from a formal reprimand if you get <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> be like, be like oh, I see what you, I, I see. Never mind. Okay. I stand corrected. <laughs> So Riker goes down to engineering and gets Jordy to uh, to join him, and uh, well, it was, it's actually kind of funny because he gets Jordy to to um, to join him, and and Jordy's kind of like kind of excited, like ready to go. So then we get to uh, we get to uh, Worf, and Worf is trying to build. I guess it was a ship. Yeah, I put in my notes, Worf building a model ship is the funniest thing I've seen in a while. <laughs> he worked a little, he was working a little too hard to put that, <laughs> that thing together. <laughs> it, it was funny too, because it was all very subtle. And he's like trying to put that, uh, the what's supposed to be, I think, part of the mass into that. And then like Riker chimes in and he breaks it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so then he, it, but what, what cracks me up is Worf fucking rage quit <laughs> in the scene because he, Riker goes in and is like, uh, am I disturbing you? <laughs> and then he just like puts his arm and then swipes everything off the desk and goes, I'm finished. I just finished. And I was like, wow, Worf just rage quit on putting a model together. <laughs> <laughs> this shit was so funny. <laughs> but that whole conversation afterwards is pretty dope too because he's like, he's like, uh, Worf said it was a losing situation because it was a uh, waste of time. Yeah, right. And then and Riker says, "You're outmanned. You're outgunned. What do you do? Like, what are you left with?" And I thought that delivery, that line, was pretty dope too. And then Worf just leans back, crosses his arm, and goes, "Guile." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." It would have been funny if he leaned back and goes, "What do you have left?" Leans back and goes, "Balls." That's <laughs> and grabs right. which is basically means the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be on. Uh, that would be on the Orville. <laughs> <laughs> right these nuts motherfucker. <laughs> excuse me while i tap them on your on your forehead Dink. <laughs> bloop, bloop. 
<laughs> he goes, geez, nuts. And they both go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Uh, so the last person that uh, that Riker gets is Wesley. But he wants him to come along as an observer. And in my thinking, I was like, going, man, he's just trying to pat it up. He's like, going, yeah, I'll have him as an observer. And he can kind of think on the fly a little faster than some of these other cats. So let's just right. <laughs> let's just bring him on because, you know, he might uh, he might come in handy, I should say. So. Um, so. Uh, before the simulation, Riker set, challenges Kolrami to a game of Stratagema. Uh, and Kolrami is like a, I don't know, Grand Master of the KKK or Grand Dragon or something. <laughs> in, in that He's level. also a super dick and needs to catch his <laughs> fucking hands, dude. I know. Like, dude. he has steady attitude. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's just so arrogant about everything. And you're just kind of like, you want Riker just like, out of nowhere, he gets like, you see the head of someone's dick hit him across the face. And then Riker zips <laughs> up his uniform. Like, That's just wanted right. to, just wanted to check you. <laughs> <laughs> need you. Need you to learn a couple things. <laughs> So, uh, so he takes the challenge in ten forward, and the funny part is, we've had a couple of funny little parts in this because, like, so they're they're in ten forward and they're putting on the finger condoms on uh, yeah. on the characters, which you're looking at and you're like, okay, there's this game is just them wiggling their fingers and it's like fucking bejeweled or something, you know? Those those <laughs> those finger things for some reason, it's like if you want it digitally grope someone when they don't want you to <laughs> this is what you use <laughs> i was like don't worry about the stuff that's inside and we just took the uh we got the props from uh this milking facility down the street <laughs> right <laughs> um so like they get over there and they're like oh yeah you know the game you know g- might go and jordy makes the joke of like not likely and i was like oh jordy got jokes Jordy's like, you you know, Riker's like, Riker's gonna lose. Jordy's got this like, kind of like all these jokes going on. Um, but what was funny is that Worf is like, I bet it bet extensively on your win. So what if I lose? I will be annoyed. <laughs> right. Like, oops. <laughs> and Riker kind of gives that look of like, ah, uh, fuck. And we never found out what actually happened. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a little less guile, I guess. <laughs> right. So then we have this uh, explanation about betting because, you know, data's there and we have to treat the audience as if they're a child. So, you know, Pulaski and and um, and Troy kind of go through this whole little trying to find the logic in betting and data doesn't see it, which it's kind of like, well, you can't teach it. <laughs> there's, there's a reason oh, yeah, it's, it's Bet- betting's an addiction it's <laughs> betting's like competing in general too he doesn't understand like why do you need to pit your strength against someone else's strength like, what what does it what does it even accomplish you know he just didn't understand it data did you miss the early 2000s <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> what's funny is this, this is the first and last time we see this game yeah yeah Betajima. Because it has a cool name, but it looks fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it looks, and this is also, we said um, last time when they showed the little holographic thing mm-hmm. in the ready room, we said that was the last time they used hologram. No, it's not because they used it here <laughs> too. And it, it just, the game well, makes no sense. Like, yeah, it's like, just like, yeah, like I, I couldn't figure out what they were trying to do, which I kind of thought they were playing like a more aggressive version of Othello. <laughs> That's imagine? what it kind of felt like. Yeah, <laughs> it was actually Pac Man, right? <laughs> you heard if you paid attention, like if you turned up the volume at the end when Riker lost, you heard. It's like oh, <laughs> it would have been funny if they flashed a sign that said "Game Over," <laughs> or yeah. no, no, in in fucking Mortal Kombat, you lose. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Fatality. Like oh shit. You hear Worf go, finish him. <laughs> <laughs> so easy, simply, simply enough to say, Riker loses quickly. Basically, I think it was uh, twenty three moves. I think. Yeah, like, yeah. and the other, it was like he only made twenty three moves. It was like one hundred to twenty three. Yeah, and 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 Cole Rami was ultra dick about it. 
He was like, taking the pieces off his fingers, like, yeah, motherfucker, just another <laughs> day's work. You know, like, oh, dude. It would, it would. It's almost like, yeah, you know, this was this was fun and all. I almost broke a sweat, but I didn't. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of the level. Of it's shit okay because it. it's it's okay because I just I put uh, orange is a new black on pause. So now I can right. go back and pick up on it. <laughs> no, it's kind of the level of shit talking you would expect expect from like two really good friends who are right. just joking around. But when you do it to someone you don't know, mm. you, you need to catch a slap. Like you just <laughs> being a dick. <laughs> you know that would have been a fu- funny ass running gag in the whole show. Like every time you know, every time he acts arrogant, you see like some he- head of someone's dick slap him across the face. And then, mm-hmm. you, like in this instance, you see Worf zip back up, his, zip up his uniform. It's like every guy is doing that to him. <laughs> so, um, so uh, we go the the they arrive to the Hathaway. So Riker and his team beam over to the Hathaway and are given only forty eight hours to uh, to get the ship into working order. And seeing the conditions of the Hathaway, Worf is like. Yeah, no, this, this is not cool. I, I, I even looked at the, I even looked at. It, I go, oh, it's the prop room for the series because it was like every random prop you can throw, it's in that ship. Um, yeah, and uh, you this know, had wires hanging out of random places and shit. <laughs> see somebody's HDMI cord. You see a fucking Xbox controller sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> There's an old Dreamcast on the console and shit. What the fuck. And, and it's like the paper cover from like Destiny. It's not even like in the plastic. It's just the paper, right? <laughs> the paper of it. <laughs> it's and, a power uh, glove on the corner. Yeah, <laughs> right. And uh, so Worf isn't ex- exactly excited about it, and Riker is, and he gives like this very uh, what do you call it? Uh, motivational speech uh, about you know that. They're going to, you know, take on the crew and, you know, it's up to their abilities, blah, blah, blah. And I loved the fact that the loose wires were everywhere. <laughs> it's just random loose wires all over the place. Um, so uh, Wesley and uh, Jordy go down to engineering and they pretty much assume that the ship cannot attain warp speed. And because there's not very many dilithium crystals and no antimatter to power the ship. And I was like, wow, really? You just strip it of everything? Like, what kind of test is that? Like, it's kind of like, yeah, you're, it's, it's, it's like when, you know, you, you, like you see on those military movies where they have, like, two platoons going at each other and you have the one group of fuck-ups that's just there to get killed by the, the well, didn't elite. They, didn't they say at some point they wanted to see how Starfleet responds to when it's unbalanced? Like, the test was more for Riker. It wasn't for Picard. The test was more to see if your ship's fucking crippled, if you were going to be able to get the job done. Right. Well, they were talking about, yeah, like, later on he mentions about a mismatch, and then he goes, I call it a challenge. Right. You know? Uh, So, uh, back on the Enterprise, Kalrami challenges... Well, he doesn't challenge Data. They kind of got this wrong on Memory Alpha, but... It was uh, Pulaski fucking tries to instigate um, uh, Data in or uh, Kalrami into a challenge with Data. And he's kind of like, oh, and Data's like, oh, I don't, I, I'm not interested. I, I could kind of, basically he's like, I could give two shits about this whole thing. <laughs> like, I, I really I really don't give a shit about he, he, it. He legit has like I don't fucking care. Like, <laughs> and then you know, then basically he kind of he kind of you know digs data a little bit, and then it's kind of like you know he has nothing to gain by being in a computer, but you know it's everything if uh, he has everything to lose if data wins. So kind of hitting on pride, he decides okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll do and then oh, because Pulaski looks at him and is like, please, like challenge him because she wants to bring him down a peg, you know, and she figures Data is the only one that can really do it, so he agrees to do it. But what was funny is when the when that ends and and Kurami agrees and then he goes off, the security dude uh, is standing there like looking at him and he looks like I just seen too much, 
Like, you know, right. he looked so confused as to what the hell just happened down here. Like, I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to have seen this, but uh, I kind of did. But he has some great looks in this episode. There's so many, like, catching moments that you see of this dude. So Worf suggests that uh, he can utilize the Enterprise's sensors to create a false image. So that if the inter- uh, you know gives them an advantage of if the enterprise comes in, they can drop in an image on the view screen, and then Riker says that thing of like, well, unless somebody's looking out a window, we should be good. Um, and, yeah, I mean uh, that that scene specifically. Who was the blonde chick that has so many fucking lines? I know. Like, I there's like, a random ensign that's just like, like, who the fuck are you? And then you never see her again. Well, because Riker fucked her. Left her in the fucking cage. Is like, oh shit. <laughs> he's like, he's probably looking at her going, hey, I haven't seen you before. Even though I picked you, I kind of never saw you before. So uh, why don't we head out into this Jeffrey's tube? And, you know, Riker destroyed her. So now she's just there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Catch this deer. <laughs> yeah. So, because um, <laughs> that's not sexist at all. Uh, <laughs> it so, is what it is, dude. <laughs> right. No, we, we didn't. We didn't create Riker. It's just that's how he is. It's not sexist when it's true. <laughs> just saying. So Wesley, sneaky little fuck, uh, is like Yo. stay cheating, dude. <laughs> oh, he got he. I was like going, oh shit. Wesley's like, oh, you know what? I don't want to like die on this thing. So, you know what? I gotta go back to the Enterprise because you know. I got this uh, this uh, this experiment that I need to that I need to turn off because you know I got so excited to be here because I would recommend a Riker and getting right. part of the crew and Riker's like yeah 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 get to the point <laughs> he's like I need to go back to the ship all right so he goes back and he's escorted by Burke because the Kyle Rami's like yeah he he can only go there and get what he needs to do but it's funny because Burke right, is first like first of all I- don't tell me what I can fucking do bitch <laughs> that'd be funny if you threw that out. Yeah. And then Burke like uh escorts him down to engineering. He's like, "Oh, this is ruined." He's like, "On, I don't want to be here. I need to go." Cuz he's, you know, cuz you figure he's probably like, "This is nothing." And I'm like, "Wow, this is stupid." You know, it's like he's fucking part of the crew. Why are, why are we doing this? Right. So, he's like, "I got to destroy it." But don't worry. I'll I'll, I'll jettison out spit. All right. I'll... So Burke takes off and Wesley's kind of like, hmm. And I loved it too because the next thing we know is like it beams right into the engineering on the Hathaway and then like it rolls and it makes a noise. And then Jordy looks down and he has that look around like, did anybody else see that? <laughs> like, <laughs> like what, what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> did I come to work fucking blazed again? Cause I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> I know I'm drunk. I know I'm drunk. <laughs> Shit, if Riker smell if Riker notices, I'm fucked up this time. <laughs> if Riker notices he's gonna ask me for my shit and I don't have that much, <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, Riker and then Worf didn't get me that that you know that special stuff he said he was gonna get me from Kronos. So yeah, I'm fucked. That's up special right. stuff from Kronos. <laughs> Cause you know that shit is on a totally different level. Yeah. <laughs> that's that real deal shit. <laughs> so uh data and Kolrami prepare to play stratagema and what was funny is that like they're like you uh troy and like uh troy and uh pulaski are like trying to motivate him and they're like you know remember take the shortest route to victory and then kind of data looks up and is like why wouldn't i like uh kind of like thank you captain obvious that's yeah kind of, of course that's what... <laughs> what i'm gonna do dumbass <laughs> <laughs> like who's you're acting all brand new today what's up with that <laughs> it's like unlike you motherfuckers i don't have all day to be here <laughs> so i'm going to be quick about it <laughs> best believe i got game of thrones paused in my quarter so of course the shortest path to victory is what i'm gonna take exactly <laughs> but uh data loses 100 to 81. Uh, he offers Data a rematch, but then Data is kind of like, I don't see why that would be the purpose. <laughs> what would be the purpose yeah, of a rematch? Yeah, he's like, what's the point? Yeah. And so, you know, Troy and, and Pulaski try to, you know, are kind of confused as to what happened, but Data's like, 
you know, I, I, you know, that he's supposed to be infallible. And he's like, apparently, what, uh, what did he say? Like, um, apparently fl- not. Yeah, apparently not, or something along. But my that thing line. is, whoever said he was infallible? <laughs> I don't know. I remember yeah. that ever being said. <laughs> so we get to uh, so at this point, um, Cole Rami continues to display a lack of confidence in Riker, and Picard takes him aside in his ready room for an explanation. Uh, what was funny is that in that whole scene, like he's like, you know. You, because he says like you have an excellently trained crew, and then he starts kind of bad mouthing Riker. And what's funny is that that uh, that instant instant Burke looked at him and gave him this look of like, "Yo, fuck this clown." <laughs> yeah, that total look on his face of like, "You have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Shut up before I set you up." <laughs> Shut up before I set you up. (laughs) Set you up with these fucking hands, motherfucker. That would be awesome if suddenly you see it again. He gets hit in the face with a dick, and you see Berg zipping up his uniform. (laughs) Like, yeah. (laughs) Countless people are just like. Everybody whacking their fucking dicks around today. (laughs) Captain Captain Picard, I find your crew a little concerning. They seem to be whipping their genitalia out and <laughs> hitting me in the face with it. That's how we fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> you, what you 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 afraid of people displaying their sexuality or the fact they're hitting you in the face with it? <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> so Picard takes him to the ready room and you know and wants demands an explanation as to why he you know he thinks Riker's like why is he why is he dissing Riker so bad. And then he says he found Riker wanting, and that he he doesn't make a doesn't make a good captain because he's light. He makes light of a serious situation, you know. Um, and then what I loved was uh, was Picard was like, "Don't cute confuse talent with intent." Yeah, I dug that too. Yeah, and uh, you know he's like he sticks up for him and saying that joviality is his leadership style. And I was like, and I was like, you know what? Fuck you, Riker's Riker. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. that's that's kind of what he is, you know. And it's 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 funny too because because of that he like he gets loyalty, like people want to do shit for him, which is why Wesley did what he did. <laughs> so, Data has removed himself from bridge duty and he's um, sulking in his quarters. Uh, so Troy t- tries to counsel him in his quarters and learns from and to learn from him his mistakes. But Data says he's performing a diagnostic of his systems and found that he made he made no mistakes and therefore his deductive capabilities should be questioned. And then Pulaski comes in and tries to basically give him that hard love. But he says that basically he's damaged. He's um, like, fuck you, bitch. I know about my shit. Don't worry yeah. about don't worry about what I'm doing. Yeah, you be you. <laughs> right. So, and it basically Data's kind of feeling insecure and like vulnerable at this point. You kind of expect him to be sitting in like the shower, the sonic shower, going, "Why, Mm -hmm. (laughs) why?" So, the Hathaway on the Hathaway, Jordy and Wesley are hooking up uh, Crusher's experiment. Now, according to Wesley, it should. be used to fuel the warp engines because it contains antimatter. Wrecker r- r- walks in and it, and when he finds out and Wesley confesses, he accuses him of stealing and then, uh, or cheating, cheating, I'm sorry. He goes, uh, you're cheating. And then he's like, you told us to improvise. And I was like, oh, damn. Fucking Wesley throwing back people's words in their face again. <laughs> like that was o- I was almost waiting for Wrecker to be like, listen, don't be a smart ass, all right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I see what you're trying to do, and you're not going to take me down this hole with you, motherfucker. I'll push That's you right. in a fucking airlock, and I'll, I'll send a and I'll send an email to your mom telling about what happened. I wouldn't even have the courtesy to fucking mess with she. That's why she really came back, was to beat his fucking ass, and then she just <laughs> stayed. Right? She's like, She's like I got to keep him here. in check. I got to keep him in check, so. Right. <laughs> so... According to uh, according to 
LaForge, they should be able to rig it to a cheap warp one for less than two seconds. Uh, but there is a chance that they could actually stall. If it fails, it stalls the Hathaway, which doesn't help them in any case if that happens. So it's an hour before the battle, and Troy and Pulaski go to Picard and talk about Data's condition. And Picard seems so fucking annoyed. He has that look of like, bitches, please. <laughs> like, <laughs> Bitch, get the fuck off my dick. <laughs> <laughs> so they figure that Picard, you know, tells him that he might make a mistake, but that, you know, that he can't alter his duty, you know, that. And it, it's funny because he's like, he's all like, seriously, like, oh, my God. I can't believe I, you know, what it, I think he says something like an hour before a battle simulation, I got to handhold a droid or an android. Yeah, I have and to then, handhold an android. And then, and then fucking Pulaski oh, that was comes some, back. Oh, something I forgot to mention. And mm-hmm. this is a running joke in my notes. Every time Data is playing this game, Troy is the one who's putting the things on his finger. And I'm like, <laughs> what did I put? I put fucking, hold on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I put, three times I put this in my notes keeps bad bitches that's all data does <laughs> keeps bad bitches <laughs> fucking note i can't this... believe i i forgot i was so busy listening to you that i forgot to fucking say it jesus <laughs> so picard is kind of like oh yeah but belaski has that line of like well burdens of command you know i and... put Data got Troy to assist him during the game because he keeps fly bitches. And then <laughs> I put Troy again in, and then all in all caps keeps bad bitches. <laughs> she was looking cute this episode. Too. She was. She was. So Picard goes down to Data's quarters and tells him that, you know, he might make a mistake, but it doesn't alter his duty. And it is possible to go through life without making a single mistake and still lose. And then he's, um, and my favorite was like, he's like, you know, that's life. And I was like, damn. That was a dope quote. Yeah. Cause the way he came in, it, it looked like he, like Picard comes in and he's like, bridge now. Like, <laughs> that's kind of the look he had when he walked in there. Like, fuck this shit. Let's go. We got shit to do. He he was like a straight up dad. Like he's just like fuck this. Like that's, yeah. we got shit. We got work to do. We got work to do. So, Data goes to the observation lounge to brief Troy on Riker's past use of tactics, um, and we just got this kind of little comedic little thing. Well, he, well, he may change it because he thinks we he we know this, but then he may think he knows that we know. You go into this little thing because Data's yeah. over analyzing the situation. But they go into his character and basically come up that, you know, Riker will basically fight. You know, if he's pushed into a, a desperate situation, you know, the harder the situation, the harder he'll fight. Which is basically what it comes down to. Basically, in 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 other words, uh, Riker's going to take your shit. That's basically yeah. what it comes down to. And uh, so the battle's about to begin. So. Picard initiates the Kume maneuver to get Riker to tip his hand. And uh, so uh, it was funny too, because he's like, he goes, why would he start with such a simple, with such a simple thing? And then he's like going, cause he's cheesing us. So, so yeah, they basically try yeah. to see what we're, he wants us to reveal our strategy right off, right from the jump. But of course he forgot who he was dealing with. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was a, been, this, this whole battle was dope. Like well, it was it was just cool. What would have been funny is if you would have been even cooler is if Riker did this just leaning the entire time. Not even sitting in the command chair, just leaning. Then he would have just won. Then he would have just won. <laughs> like it wouldn't have even been You know what I mean? Like they they go they they go on that Riker leans, shields go down, phasers go offline, <laughs> like the Enterprise is dead in the water. <laughs> we like going, oh shit. Is that Riker lean? <laughs> so Worf goes ahead and tries one of his tricks, which shows a Romulan warbird appearing and attacks the Enterprise. But it's only a hologram. The um, Hathaway scores several hits on the Enterprise while they're distracted by the Romulan warbird. Picard 
Picard kind of being like, okay, all right, I see what you've got now. He goes and, of course, changes the access, and then tells uh, Data to change the access codes <laughs> and prepare to fire. So the Hathaway prepares to warp jump, but then a Ferengi battle cruiser uh, appears, and then the Enterprise goes to ignore it because they think, you know, because they had this good exchange where Picard looks at Data's like, "Did you change that code?" And then Data's like, "Uh, yeah, you told me to." <laughs> yeah, mother. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> well, you think I'm, think I'm fucking brand new here? <laughs> and then he's like, "Of course, I changed oh. that fucking code." That he's like, oh, Mr. Worf is a little more clever than they get hit. <laughs> and it's like... He he switched to being serious real fucking quick, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like suddenly like, okay, no game. We're, you know, fucking this shit. So, uh, so the... Uh, so it scores several real hits in the Enterprises. It weakens its shields, disables and disabling the transporters. Uh, neither ship can attack the Frangi as they don't have any real weapons that are operable. And uh, Picard refuses to abandon the crew in the Hathaway uh, to retreat that Komari says. I was like, wow, dude, you're having a fucking battle simulation. And it's like, leave them. We got to get out of here. Like, damn, you don't like it's like I get it. You know, you, you're outnumbered. But fuck, dude. Yeah, like he was straight. I mean, it's like strategy with no heart. Like yeah. what he said is not an unsound set strategy. You save more. You right. know, you save more that way. But but Picard's like, fuck you, man. I'm going to leave my homies out there. Yeah, Ride or die, out. motherfucker. Exactly. Pouring out a drink. <laughs> you see out of nowhere, Riker pulls out a, or Picard pulls out a gat, points it at his head sideways and yeah. shit. Like, you, you gonna, you gonna, you really want me to do that? Tell me, you really want me to do that order? Uh, you, this, you, you, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> this leads in to the greatest moment. <laughs> of this episode i laughed so hard i had to pause it <laughs> so the ferengis hail is it ferengis hey. or ferengi ferengis <laughs> they're not mushrooms <laughs> the ferengis hail now you have to keep in mind in this period they were still toying with the idea with ferengis being the new aggressor so they did the typical aggressive thing where they fire a bunch of shots off and then they stop and then they want to talk to you because they're kind of like, we coming in. Like, you know, we hear motherfucker, like pay attention. Right. So they come up on the screen. These two cat, first of all, we got my main man from DS9 before he was a dude from DS9 and then some random. They're, they look so fucking confused as to what's <laughs> going on. And then they start explaining it like you're attacking your own ship and your ship is crippled, but you're still protecting that ship. You saw us coming and you didn't do shit. You saw us coming. You didn't do nothing. And then, then it's like it, it clicks in his head where he goes something valuable on that little ship. Like it's just the whole. First of all, it's the first time the Ferengis have ever been done right in Star Trek history is this episode. Because it was he was conniving, like he 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 felt there was something of value on that other ship, which is a sound assessment. Like if you don't know what's going on, like obviously there's something that you want on that ship, and now you don't want me to have it. So right. what the fuck is on that ship? <laughs> you know um, exactly. And then we keep in mind that the uh, these Ferengi ships, I, I always forget the name, but the the mm -hmm. cruiser or whatever, they're um, comparable to the Enterprise. So this is a real threat right now. This is like no joke, you know, right. like, oh, shit. <laughs> but I just thought I laughed so fucking hard. They just the look on their face. Their mouth was slightly open and they're, they're <laughs> yeah, kind of squinting like, what the fuck? It's like you're 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 firing on that, but you're not doing anything and you're not firing on us. So what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. So I, get... and then he goes, I am Braxtar and I will know <laughs> the secret of the, like, he just gets all big all of a sudden. It's like, suddenly it's like, suddenly he's like doing, suddenly he's doing a, a, a version of like King Lear. <laughs> like, I was I dying, know. dude. The, the whole thing was so funny. So he gives him 10 minutes to surrender the Hathaway and leave in peace. So 10 Picard, of your minutes. Yeah. The Ferengis always minutes. act like they're, they're so alien when they talk. <laughs> Oh, this is also the first and only time, and I, I saw this uh, in the um, 
in Memory Alpha when I was on there. This is the first and only time that warp speed was referred to as light speed. Because um, the Ferengi duty said light speed. Because the mm -hmm. other ship was incapable of it. Um, oh, so right. yeah, it was the first. And they probably said it. And then someone was like, you know, they kind of say that in that Star Wars bit a little bit. Like, yeah. Not, oh, or hyperspace. Okay. Yeah, light speed. Yeah, hyperspace. like let's yeah. just keep it at warp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Picard confers with Riker, whom is about to have warp capability on the Hathaway. So Data formulates a plan to fire photon torpedoes at the Hath at the Hathaway and will jump to warp only one millisecond before the uh, torpedoes detonate, thus making the Ferengi momentarily think that the Hathaway has been destroyed. Riker agrees to the plan despite the possibility that if they are one, if the warp drive doesn't uh, work or they're even one millisecond off, they're going to die. Right. And because uh, I like where he's like, and if if it doesn't, it'll be very unfortunate. And then it, war, you hear Worf going, Aunt very unfortunate, we'll be dead. We'll all be <laughs> dead. Like, uh, and then he's like, you know, we need uh, where he says, and then Data tells Jordy, reminding Jordy that, you know, I think this is, you know, something to be, you need to know. And he's like, you know, it's like, if you're off, and he's like, Data, I think that's the only part of the situation that everybody's sure about. So, um, so they go ahead and uh, now with the what the hell they kind of jump out on this. I mean, it really wasn't that. Uh, so Picard, um, as Picard negotiates with the with the Ferengi, the shoot the you know the Ferengi is not going to give up on it he's like going you know Picard's like no this is not happening so he fires uh photon torpedoes they explode and then the the ship goes to warp or at least you're unsure if it goes to warp because it just disappears then out of nowhere uh you know uh they sensors of the of the of uh, the Ferengi uh, marauder sense that a Federation starship is approaching. So they're uh so they're like, oh, more people coming. Okay, we out. <laughs> yeah, deuces. <laughs> yeah, we oh oh there oh there's another ship coming. Okay. Um, you know what? It's been fun, it's been real, but it hasn't been real fun. So we out. <laughs> it's been uh -huh. fun, it's been real, but it hasn't been real fun. <laughs> <laughs> so they take off and uh then uh you know uh Riker Riker comes on and they figure out, okay, they made it, so now they're cool, so they're going to go pick them up. So they reach the uh, – it was funny because at this point, you know, they retreat, and, you know, Kolrami admits to having, like, a greatly underestimated Riker, and then he leans in. He's like, this will appear very favorably in my report. And then, oh, there's, this, and then there's this point where he slaps uh, uh, that ensign – on the on the shoulder and he looks back at him like motherfucker don't touch me <laughs> yeah i thought that shit was funny yeah because he gets that real... you putting hands on because <laughs> yeah, he made that real quick turn like bitch don't did i fucking tell you, you could touch me like <laughs> <laughs> and then he did this weird like back turned looking to the side like this dude was a little weird <laughs> yeah like, he was awkward hmm. but just 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 a little bit so, uh, Data goes ahead and they have a rematch yeah. of Stratagema. So, Komari is intent, on, um, is intent on the game, but Data is calm. You can see it. Like, Data has a total poker face as he's playing, but Komari is kind of like, like <laughs> struggling. And both players have made over 30,000 30, moves and it's become like a record-setting game and the, the numbers are climbing still. And then... Out of nowhere, Korami throws down the controls and suspends the game. And Data's like, yo, dude, what the fuck? I, you know, and he's like, uh, and then he accuses Data of, of of mocking him and then leaves. And then we find out that, like, you know, they're like, oh, Data, you won. He's like, no, it was a stalemate, you know, or that, no, it was a draw. And then he simply changed his programming, which I thought was kind of cool. So... He's like, well, I figured Cole Rami was 
was soul intent on winning, so I just played for a stalemate. So he blocked every possible avenues, even though he could have won in certain areas, and he played it until Korami ran out of patience. <laughs> And, uh, I thought that was clever as fuck. Th I thought that was too, because I was like, oh yeah, because he's playing to win, so you're playing just to block him from winning, which is really what you're doing. So he's like, you know, so Data declared that he had only, he had not strictly defeated Karami, and then they looked at a, they looked at him, and then he's like, I busted him up. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there we go. A little, cor little corny, but you yeah, know, good. you got you got to add the little, you got to add the little data human er element in there, you know. I like this episode. Like this I, was, it, a it was, it was. Go ahead. No, it was just you probably gonna say the same thing. It was just a fun episode. Um, I love Ferengis, especially <laughs> when they're dumb right. Um, and the B storyline was just as strong as the A storyline. I thought it was good. Well, because they you didn't know. dwell too long on it. Right. Like and the A storyline was, was strong, too. So it kind of could have... You could have kind of dominated the whole thing as an A storyline, but it worked well with the B. Sulking like Achilles in his tent. I thought that was fucking clever. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yep, exactly what he's fucking doing, too. <laughs> but uh, it was good. I, I really enjoyed the episode. Um, yeah, I mean, word up. I wish this was the season finale. Yeah, the this one is, they would have to... ended strong on this. Yeah. I feel like they had that filler episode for the next one, and they were just like, oh, fuck it, just throw it on the end. Like, <laughs> Well, I know cares? that was I know that that was mostly because of the um, the writer's strike that happened at that time. Yeah. But uh, still, you know, it was, was kind of like... It is what it is. Could have just left it alone. <laughs> so that's it for this one. Oh, that Good is episode. it. Good episode. Um. Good episode, people. Good episode. <laughs> good, yeah. Good show. Good show. Good show. Good show. Um, <laughs> so please rate and review. <laughs> please rate and review the show on iTunes or anywhere else. And um, if you want to catch any of our old episodes, you can definitely catch them on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play Music, um, and our website, thelazygeeks.com. If you want any suggest to make any suggestions for the show, of course, Star Trek related, you can share them on our Facebook or Google Plus pages. We're also over on Twitter and Instagram under the one word, the Lazy. Um, and any feedback you want to give us, definitely drop by thelazygeeks.com or email us at mailbag at thelazygeeks.com. And you can find me on the internet on Twitter at middle geek, Instagram, middle underscore geek. And you can check out my other podcast every Wednesday, the Extended Play Movie Podcast. This week's movie, uh, of course, appropriate Christmas movie, probably the pinnacle of all Christmas movies, Die Hard. Uh, and you can check that out on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play Music. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then at this particular point, you should be able to check out any of my back catalog and my other musings on just uh, justanotherblog.com. And you can find me on Twitter at SapienTLG. And uh, just, to, just a reminder, this is our last episode of the year. Uh, when we return the week of January eighth, we will have we will go to our two show only format every Monday. The LazyGeeks.com, uh, the Lazy Geeks podcast, sorry, and uh, we will also return with the last episode of season two, which will be the away team number fifty, Shades of Gray, and that ep this series will go to a weekly series. So no uh, no two a month. You'll get four a month. How's that? That feel good, huh? Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, it tickles <laughs> a little, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to that. Um, also, just keep in mind for the episodes next week. Even though we're going to be off the next two weeks, we do have uh, uh, episodes coming out for you uh, on Monday. Instead of the Lazy Geeks podcast rewind, I'm going to have a Cheap Seats rewind, a Christmas episode from 2016, the Star Wars holiday special. And uh, and it was funny because when I was re-listening to that, I was thinking, oh my God, if you listen to my other, the Extended Play Movie podcast, we re revisited some movies and you know we said that Planet of the Apes was the most painful. Actually, I think this was probably the most painful when I was listening to us talk about it. 
<laughs> I was like going, oh my God, I think that was the most painful. And then that Friday, we will return with the Lazy Geeks podcast, Rewind, uh, the Lazy Geeks 2010 Awards. <laughs> I forgot oh, we man. did that show, yeah. And then, of course, the week after that, we will have we will go back to our regular format of another Lazy Geeks podcast, Rewind, and that Friday, our finale episode, or premiere episode, depending on which feed you're listening to, just another podcast. So that is it for this edition of The Away Team. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. Two to beam up. This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network. Available only at thelazygeeks.com. Thank you.